Hello and welcome back to week two of the September reset. Yes, we've had a week of it already. I'm going to let you know how it went and then I'm going to introduce you to week two and the ideas that I've had for spending a week doing a bit of home reset. Now, if you missed last week's video, don't worry, you can still go back in and grab the PDF that's linked in the description down below. Watch it, of course, and then uh, but grab the PDF because look, these are just good ideas for things that can set us up for a bit of a reset at any time. It's not linked to being September, it's not linked to being this year, it's not linked to starting on a certain day or finishing at a certain time. It's just ideas to make things a little bit easier as we go along and uh, reduce the friction in our lives a little bit and add a few things that make our lives better. So today um, we'll be moving on to week two and that's all about uh, resetting your home and I've got once again I've got seven ideas linked to a day but as I said take it casually do what you like to do see how you get along. This week I'll just do a quick reset on um, reset yeah okay review on how I did and uh, yeah it was pretty good. The first one was getting that early light in the morning in my walk and and I did link it to a walk and it's that contrast when the light is really low the contrast between the yellow and the blue and it helps to reset your circadian rhythm so I did that that was a good start and my sleep has been improving. Um, I'm keeping well hydrated yes that's something I like to do and um, so I've been drinking about two and a half liters of water a day on average and, and that's pretty good. Um, the seasonal vegetables are fabulous, particularly the fruits. Uh, you know, yes, I'm still indulging in strawberries. Start the day the night before. Yes, an evening routine is good. Though I will admit that the other night I had uh, made dinner, cleaned up. You know, eaten my dinner, cleaned up from it, tidied up. Um, you know, put the dishwasher on. I uh, had my shower, got into my PJs, and thought, oh, what's the time? Must be time for bed. <laughs> it was 7:30. So. <laughs> I made myself stay up um, until nine. I, I watched some TV and I read. But I mean, seriously, I could, you know, it's this is lockdown brain. You know, you've got to realise we're, we're going to be locked down till November at least. If we get out for Christmas, we're going to be lucky. It, it's a race to get us vaccinated at this point, and, and our supply is pretty low. Anyway, so yes. <laughs> That morning, that evening routine definitely sets you up for sleep. The other one was to love the skin you're in, and yes, I, to be fair, I do look after my skin, and uh, I always do this. I, I can't remember the last time I went to bed without doing a little bit of a skincare regime, whether or not I've had makeup on, and that's less likely than ever these days because of, um, you know, not going anywhere. And when you do, you go out under a mask, and, and I have glasses on and a mask, there's not much for me showing, to be fair. Uh, but yes, so a skincare every night and it does mean that I go to bed with my skin feeling really good and nourished. What was the other one? Oh yes, a news fast. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm on that. Um, I'm still going on that. Uh, I, I've had a few days of trying to tune out from, from the news and it does help. It, you know, there were a couple of things that I wanted to know and I followed them. There was a little boy, a little three-year-old bubby was lost up on a rural property up in New South Wales. And on day four, after he'd been lost for over three full days, they found him alive. So I needed to hear that one. I think the whole world needs to hear that one. That this little boy, AJ, was found, dear little poppet, sitting in a public puddle, having a little bit of drink. <laughs> Not ideal, but he's alive. He was checked over in hospital. He's back home with his mummy and daddy. See, the world needs to hear those stories. It was like a collective sigh from everybody I knew who'd been watching, you know, and, and praying for that little man. And the last one from last week, which is today, um, is to be your own best cheerleader. To give yourself that Mel Robbins high five in the mirror in the morning to say, hey, you're doing your best, you're doing okay. Let me know how you went in week one, by the way. Just leave your comments down below. Anybody who joined in or anybody who would like to, remember to go back, grab that um, PDF from the description. So here we are, week two. Another PDF, another seven days. And yes, it will be linked down below in the description so you can grab it if you would like to, to read it, to print it out, follow along. If you'd like to, I'd love to have you. If you want to uh, join us, then don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell, the one at the top with the little bells, because that's the only way that uh, YouTube will notify you when I put up another video. And you know, give me a thumbs up if you like this sort of thing so I know what you like me to produce. Number one, tomorrow, Wednesday, clean and refresh one room a day. Now, 
Remember, this isn't deep cleaning or major decluttering. This is simply refreshing. And that's all we're aiming to do on this one room a day. So by the end of the week, most of your house will be looking, you know, depending on the size of your house, will be looking fresh and clean and tidy. And not that I'm saying it isn't already, but this way it's just got a little bit of an extra seasonal zhuzhah. So open the windows, you want some fresh air coming in. I know it might be cold or it might be really warm still where you are, but a bit of fresh air goes a long way, especially in the early morning if it's, if you're, if it's still very warm where you are. Um, I tend to open the door uh, to my balcony and open, I never close my windows in the bedroom ever, almost. Um, during the year so for me I've always got fresh air coming through the house and it really makes a difference yes it gets dusty hence we need a bit of a clean up then um, set your timer for 10 minutes grab a basket to put anything that doesn't belong in that room into as you go through you clear the counter you clear your tops put anything that belongs in that room away hang up everything that needs to be hung up put it out in the laundry if you, that's what you need to do with it stack your shoes and with your shoe your shoes belong all of those sorts of things out with the duster, do all the flat surfaces, then out with the vacuum cleaner, do that really good vacuum, and then pop anything that belongs somewhere else that's in your basket, take it away, put them where they're meant to live, and you're done. And that's about 10 minutes. Your little timer will ring by then. Um, and, and if it rings a tiny bit before, turn it off, but just complete. But if, you know, if it's ringing when you're thinking, oh, I'm only halfway through, then you're not doing just those little things and you've got to remind yourself no this isn't a decluttering it's not your spring clean or your autumn clean this is just a quick zhuzh up and a tidy and a refresh day two thursday give your bed some love we spend a lot of time in our beds we ask a lot of them um, and it's time to give them a bit of love back so strip your bed right down take off the mattress protector if you don't have one please go and buy yourself one. They are inexpensive and they protect the mattress uh, from uh, you know all the dust and things that we collect on ourselves over the years. Um, it's, it's a horrible fact that mattresses get heavier and heavier as they age because of the dust mites in the skin cells. And yeah, look, just look it up, Google it. It's really gross and it's a very good reason to give them a good clean and to have a mattress protector so that it does in fact reduce some of that. Then, Turn that mattress around. Most of mattresses these days have a pillow top so you don't flip them over the way we used to. We used to flip them and turn them. Now you just do that 180 in, uh, degrees so that um, the, the top goes to the bottom and it just gives the whole mattress a little bit of um, a change in the way that the use patterns, wear patterns are. Then sprinkle it with bicarb soda, baking soda. Not a lot. I've seen people put empty boxes onto it. You don't need to do that. It's a sprinkle and uh, perhaps a little rub into the seams and there's particularly the big seams around the edges and just leave it for about an hour, then vacuum it off. Now I have a mattress spray that I bought, just a generic sort of one from a linen store, from a bedding store, and it smells beautiful and it's got a lot of essential oil bases in, but anything that's got, say eucalyptus, tea tree, peppermint, lemons, any of those are really good and they deter dust mites. I know, Google it, we don't wanna go there, it's gross. But then just lightly spray your pillows and your mattress with that, some pillows by the way can be washed and that's entirely up to you and what sort of pillows they are and if it's a good day for it then you do that as well but if you've just sprayed your bedding your mattress rather lightly with this then leave it to dry and air for the whole day if possible then make it up in some really nice seasonal linens i mean i'm going lighter of course because we're coming into spring and in other areas you'll be going into the more cozy snuggly sort of things to keep you warm on those cool winter evenings and nights so yeah just choose it and enjoy, slip into it and just bliss. And I would also add, and this isn't down here, but I'd add, do make it again in the morning. Air it, make it. Because while some people will tell you that they really don't think it's important and they don't care if they make their bed and what's the fuss for anyway, you're just going to get back into it. And yet I have never, ever heard anyone say that they hate going to hotels because yuck, the beds are always made and they've always got nice linens on them. And, you know, they just hate it when you come in from a day out when you're on holiday and you come back to your hotel oh, and the bed's made. Said no one ever, okay? Give yourself the same treat. Let yourself have that as part of the respect for yourself and your home. Okay, Friday. Look after the things that look after you. Uh, <laughs> so our great-grandmothers would have treated our household appliances like magic things because you know what? They are. So dig out those manuals. Uh, look them up. Most of them are available online. Find out how to clean it. Find out what um, maintenance they say to do on it. You know, for 
things like I would start with your coffee machine, your kettle, your ovens, your washing machines, dryers, dishwashers, vacuum cleaners. Yes, you can clean your vacuum cleaner, micro, your microwave and your refrigerators and freezers. If you do one or two of these items, these appliances a day, then by the end of the week, you'll have made a pretty good dent in them. By the end of the month, they'll all be pretty good. I mean, things like on the front loader washing machines, for example, down on mine, it's down on the right hand side, there is a filter that needs to be cleaned and also um, another one that you have to pull out and a little drain and it drains out any excess water from the whole system. Yes, you put something under it to catch it, put a towel under there as well. And um, yeah, so those are the sorts of things that you just get done. And now we're on Saturday and it's use it up, clear it out. And it's time to clear up those hand creams, shampoos, perfumes, skincare, especially those beautiful little mini pots that you get um, in, a, in a group and you get to try out the whole range. They're lovely, but do use them up. Any samples, um, cleaning products, anything that's in your pantry or refrigerated that you, know, you just need to have a good sort through. So first you sort it out, what's still good and what would you actually want to use. Anything that you don't, you recycle and then you basically start using up what's left. Um, move from the things that have that are the smallest amount of product in them still and and go through to the biggest unopened ones. Now a lot of things will have use by dates on them. That is it's actually from you know particularly for things like um, you know bathroom products, skincare products and things like that. It's from the time you take the seal off it. It's not from the time you bought it because it's a sealed product and all oh, right, I mean, if it's 20 years old, then perhaps there's an issue. But you know what I mean? That once you've opened it, that's when the countdown starts. And to be fair, for obvious reasons, the use by date on those products is the absolute earliest possible use by date. I have products that I wipe with an alcohol wipe and clean every few months and I don't even know when I bought them, but they smell fresh, they work well. You can tell when they're past their, their use by date. They smell off, they they look crumbly, they've dried out, that's when they've got to go. And try to deconstruct some things if you can because an awful lot of those things like pallets, you know, they're mostly plastics and if you can possibly deconstruct them a little to, before you, uh, you know, get them, get rid of them, that would be, that would be a good thing to do for the planet. Okay, Sunday, declutter your devices. <laughs> Our phones, tablets, computers, they all gather clutter like everything else. So spend a minute you know, a minute or two, all right, 10 minutes or two, every day clearing them out. Uh, do run a backup before you do this, just because you never know what, you know, you might delete something that, oops, you think I really needed that. Well, it'll be sitting in your cloud and you can grab it again if you want to. Then delete any apps and programs and things that you're not using. Unsubscribe if you're paying for them, go into your account and make sure you hit, you know, do not renew that part of it, because it's so easy to just let things roll on when, you know, you're not using them and start a daily delete of photos and you organize them into albums. You just open a new album, just say, what's the theme? You know, is it a family one? Is it you know, homes or rooms or something that you like? Just anything, whatever the theme of those pictures is and a, a, a put a date with them and just start sorting them out. Do the same with your emails and see if you can get down to you know, to a zero in your inbox, that's a big thing, because you can, once again, open folders and put things that you want to archive and to store, you literally put them into their own folders, then they're out of the inbox, you don't have to think about it, you know exactly where to go to get them if you if you need them in the future. Uh, if you're like me, you've probably at some point collected quite a lot of cables, earphones, etc, etc, that go with all of these products, different charges, and the like, and go through those, make sure that you've got the appropriate charges for all of your devices, that you put a rubber band around them or something around them and a sticky label so that you know what they actually relate to and if they don't relate to anything or if they're broken or damaged then it's time to let them go and your cable drawer will now look tidy which is a wonderful thing and you'll be able to just reach in and grab exactly what you want. Monday, move to less waste. Now note I have not said go zero waste. Um, zero is still a step too far for me. It's a huge thing in today's world. Um, I know that. I, I do try. But every time we go shopping, we can move a little closer to it. When you plan your meals, you know, you make sure that you're buying for that plan and that leads to less food waste. 
if you buy in season and closer to the source then you're reducing all sorts of things like transport packaging and all the things that they spray on products food uh, fresh fruit and vegetables and things that, so that they have longer shelf lives you reduce those if you're buying from a farmer's market or something like that and try to buy them as loose products and not um, as you know in, in plastic bags or see wrapped up cucumbers wrapped up bananas all of these things that we get that are wrapped in plastic every bit of that plastic has come out of an oil well somewhere and a it won't last forever and b we're doing a lot of harm along the way and we can't get rid of it I mean, convenience is great but it's really bad for the planet so you know those aluminium trays and things i mean they take thousands of years to degrade somewhat wash things <laughs> Can I say it? Uh, wash plates, unless there is some absolute reason to use paper plates. I'm not saying things, you know, that there aren't times when it's uh, a sensible thing to do, but try to try to get things that will biodegrade. Just do the little things. And as soon as you start doing one or two little things, it's sort of like it wakens your um, awareness to the, the huge problem that we are creating. And, and I'm part of it. And I have been part of it for a long time. And I'm really trying now to be kinder to the planet and just also just kinder to my city, to my environment, because somehow they have to get rid of this stuff. Uh, the other one is Tuesday and it's called Shine Your Ride. Yes, be that practical woman who looks after her own car. Now, you know, give it a wash and a polish. Yes, in my case, Though I can't do it at the moment because of the lockdown, I drive mine through a car wash and then I park it at the car wash. We've got bays and we can vacuum and buff the outside with cloth and, you know, it does generally give it a good zhuzh up. Um, I tend to spray all the vinyl with um, a protector that protects it from UV rays and also just, you know, keeps it looking nice and dark and, and good. And all of those sorts of things. Then you check your tyres, check your tyre pressure, um, you do things like check basic stuff like filling up the water for your window washers then you know if you want to go to the next stage you can check your oil levels make sure they're okay and your coolant that's uh, another thing you can check to make sure that it's it's full book a service if it's due and then go and fill it up with petrol and go for a wee drive no you can't do that either actually but you know at least you're now that person that woman that practical woman who looks after your own car um we're not allowed to go for drives at the moment no so I won't be doing that. <laughs> yeah. So there you are, another week. Another week of just little things. And they may or may not appeal to you. And you may go, oh rubbish, I'm just going to do that anyway. Or I don't want to do that. And that's fine too. But let me know what your things would be for refreshing your home. What would you do to zhuzh yourself up and your home so that it's facing the next season a little bit fresher, a little bit brighter. Right, that's me for the week. I'll be back. Don't forget to grab the... Um, PDF that's down in the description and uh, subscribe come along for the ride and I hope that whatever you're doing that you're having a lovely week that you're staying safe and well and looking forward to the next season take care and I'll see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.